What a spectacular morning. It's so cool and beautiful, dark green, everything. Nobody on the road. Just chilling. I see a Dairy Queen on the way in this next town I'm heading to. Should be 10 miles in, I'll be like looking for something to eat. I like Dairy Queen. I don't usually go to Dairy Queen, but I had some the other day and even some soft serve ice cream. Whoa, that tasted good. Vanilla with fudge. That's pretty good stuff. All right, I'm gonna keep enjoying this. The Commonwealth of Kentucky is known as the Bluegrass State after a species of grass found in many of its valuable pastures as well as used for making lawns and parks and gardens. It has been instrumental in supporting the state's renowned thoroughbred horse industry. Pouring like crazy outside and they're telling me that this whole town floods completely. Roads and everything. And it's supposed to rain 100% all day. I've made 15 miles maybe. And the good thing is that there's a campground, a primitive campground right down the road here. So if I have to stay here all day, I will and read and chill out and go hit this primitive campground and make the best of it once it stops, if it stops. Hopefully it'll stop. <laughs> Heading over to the library because it's gonna rain all day and I can get Wi-Fi over there and do some research of this and that and uh, see what happens with the rain. The librarian just came out. I think she saw me on the cameras laying on the ground and she um, brought me a peach. She says they're from Georgia and it is phenomenal. I'm gonna wait till the rain stops and I'm not sure what I'm doing. There's a campground in town so I might just stay there and tomorrow it looks like a better forecast but if I can get 42 miles, to where I really wanted to go today. I'll do it, but this big cell is on top of us for a while, so we'll see. I gotta sit this one up for a little bit right here. That's where I'm at, somewhere in Western Kentucky. <laughs> I love it. I cannot believe it. I thought I was gonna be stuck in this storm for sure. I, I mean, I just cranked. I was downhill, it's like it all worked out, all comes together. And I, uh, I see, a st I see some more houses, then I see a stop sign. It didn't show it on the map real good, but I didn't want to just sit there and study the map from like while I'm riding. Hello. So I just cranked, and as soon as I stopped here, it started pouring, and the cell looks terrible, so. I'm back to it. Rain stopped. Steam coming out of the ground. Gorgeous, cool, perfect. Traveling by bicycle entails many different vulnerabilities, such as riding into foul weather without shelter, a safe place to spend the night, water and food sources, and most notably, keeping safe while sharing the roads with the traffic. Well, I just had my uh, first freak out. I was on this road coming up a hill I already made the turn and behind me I heard the car coming but the car just lost total control. It was driving uphill so I don't really know why. I mean I guess he saw me in the distance but I was pretty far from the guy. Anyways he hit the brakes and went sideways. All I heard was the car losing control and screaming wheels 
thank God there wasn't a car coming from the other direction. I mean, I don't, I don't know if it was just him and I had nothing to do with it. I have, he was far away enough behind me, but I was like, all I heard was screech, screeching wheels and just like something was behind me losing control and I, I didn't want to look back too much. I just wanted to keep riding ahead and keeping forward momentum. The kid turned around as soon as he could and then he drove by and apologized to me for scaring me. <laughs> Kentucky people are so nice. I mean, I wanted to apologize in case I had something to do with it, but anyways, not, nothing bad happened, but it was definitely a, a wake up call for me. I gotta be really careful on these roads and uh, that don't have bike paths and they're driving fast. There's definitely a danger involved in this and I just saw it firsthand. So let's be careful <laughs> and keep going. Holy smokes, I just dropped the GoPro, ran it over, it went sk skipping across a bunch of rocks, and there's not a single scratch on the lens that I can see. <laughs> There's some cells right ahead of me. I'm staying right here for now under this tree. I'm gonna wait it out. It's not that big, I see it on the radar. So maybe another 20, 30 minutes. And I'm not that far. Another 15 miles, I think. I can do that. It's not that late. It just looks late right now, but I'm heading out. I see bright skies, I'm just going to go slow, I got to get there. <gasps> There's a light at the end of every tunnel. There's a legit storm out there. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh my God, I love this tenting stuff. I can't wait to go to sleep with this rain, but I don't think there's wind. There's just, the radar looks terrible, terrible. I got all my stuff in here, like organized and this tent is absolutely insane, and tonight we'll prove it for, for real, so we'll see what happens. Camped here at Ohio County Park and Campground. Nobody around, quiet, beautiful storm. I slept until 9 in the morning. I slept phenomenally. Today I'm heading to Owensboro, which is 35 miles away. And after that, the Lewis and Clark Trail in Hartford, Illinois. That's where I'm going to start the big trek all the way to Oregon, Astoria. It's the best time of my life. I'm having every bit of adventure every single day. Never imagined it was this much fun to bicycle, tour, long distances, getting used to a routine. My camping routine is phenomenal. I, I'd much rather stay in my camp <clears throat> in any thunderstorm than be in a hotel. It's silly, but it's true. <laughs> Let's go find another one. It looks like another day of rain, so I got my gear.
non-stop traffic. No shoulder, Harley. Oh, I'm on it now, but that's tight quarters right there. Strategically located on the southern banks of the Ohio River, Owensboro, with a population of 60,000, is the fourth largest city in Kentucky. Decided to take the day off and uh, check out Owensboro, Kentucky. This is the bridge that leads to Indiana, and that's the Ohio River. It's a pretty nice town. It's the fourth largest city in uh, Kentucky and it hosts the bluegrass, the biggest bluegrass festival. I'm gonna go to the museum now while the rain comes because it's coming all day. I've been doing nothing but eating here and eating there, <laughs> just trying to get my calories out. Bill Monroe is a guy who's the father of bluegrass music, so he just put together these creative elements that resulted in, in a sound that was so distinctive that it became known as bluegrass, a, a distinctive genre. He wanted to honor his state of Kentucky, his home state, by calling his band the Bluegrass Boys, so that's where bluegrass gets its name. This song that he did. Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. So mandolin was Bill Monroe's instrument of choice. Earl Scruggs wasn't just a pretty good banjo player, he was revolutionizing how you play the banjo. Before Earl Scruggs came along, people played claw hammer style, which was kind of old time, which was a strumming style like this. He invented something to this day is called Scrug style banjo, where he used finger picks, two on his uh, index and middle finger, and then a plastic thumb pick. You can also do really bluesy things with it. So it sounds, I'll just demonstrate a little bit. popular songs has become a bit of an anthem for bluegrass and country music and a lot of people know it. Called the Willow Circle Being Broken. I was standing by my window on one cold and cloudy day when I saw that first come rolling for to carry my mother Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Thank you for visiting. Oh, man. Yeah. How cool. I had a yeah. great time. Yeah. Executive Director of the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, yeah. Chris Jocelyn. In Owensboro, Kentucky, come see us and safe travels to you, yes. man. You have to come see this place. Yeah. It's so cool. There's so much to learn. <laughs>